So that was certainly a different style of intro. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, anyways, let's get on into the review of this Vivitar 28mm f2.5. I bought this lens about a year ago at a flea market in California for about $14 to $15, and I think the mount was about the same price. So we're looking around $30 or $40 for this lens. I really wanted to review this lens because as I was researching this lens, I didn't find a whole lot of information. There's a few variations of this lens that has a bigger filter thread, um, and also mine is a Minolta MD mount. Um, the ones tested had a M42 mount. From what I read, Minolta lenses are pretty sharp, and even though this is a Vivitar brand, I think the sharpness still applies because optically this is much better than the Sears and JCPenney 28mm f2.8 lenses or if you have some generic version of those. So yeah, I have it kitted out with a 77 to 62 millimeter filter thread. So I can attach uh, my ND filter. Made entirely out of metal, I can't find any plastic anywhere. So it is a bit heavier than other lenses. The focus ring is very smooth and very precise. You can't focus past infinity, which I find is actually really useful if you just wanna go to infinity focus, bam. Unlike on the Rokinon 16mm, you can actually focus past infinity, which is somewhat odd. So this aperture ring clicks in half stops, which is kind of interesting because the other vintage lens that I've owned click in one third stop. And if you're shooting with a camera, typically you're adjusting your ISO or your aperture or shutter speed in one third of a stop. And if you're dealing with a third stop exposure increments on your ISO and half stops on the aperture ring, it gets just a bit confusing. And I noticed this when I was doing my tests. Um, if I was shooting at 2.5 and I moved down to f4, well then I know it's one full stop. So you'd feel two clicks, but have to change three more on the camera. Just keep that in mind, it only clicks every half stop. The ring itself doesn't feel as nice as I would like it to be if it was just a little bit more firmly in place. So one interesting thing about this lens is it opens up to f2.5, which is just slightly lets in more light than f2.8, which are common for 28 millimeter lenses. So lets in a little bit more light, but I think the main difference is, is the build quality and also optically. Wide open at f2.5, if we zoom in here, you can see there's a little bit of um, softness around the edges and then the highlights, but once you stop it down to about an f4 or even 5.6, it does tend to sharpen up. Now if you stop down to like f16 or f22, you're gonna get about the same sharpness as it is wide open. I just usually end up shooting at around f2.5 or f4, just because I like the way this lens looks. You know, sharpness isn't everything, and when you look at this lens, there's some really interesting characteristics. Just the way the image feels, but something about the image this lens produces is more unique than any of my other vintage lenses I've tried out. It is sharp, but it's not like super crisp sharp as modern lenses are. And I think it gives a little bit of roll off in the highlights, just a little bit. Also, this lens produces really cool lens flares. Around the edge, you can see like sort of a rainbow circle. So if you want to shoot wide open at f2.5, but you want a bit more sharpness, there's one thing you can still do. I messed around with Final Cut's built-in sharpening tool and applied that on the footage. I actually did a pretty good job of making it look sharp without making it look fake. When I applied the sharpness on f2.5, it looked pretty much as sharp as f4 on this lens, but you still have a bit of that highlight texture. So there's still a bit of softness, but the edges are crisp. So if you're finding yourself wanting more sharpness out of your lenses, you can always apply some sharpness in post, but be careful because a little bit goes a long way. If you do too much, it can look horrible. So I am using a Micro Four Thirds camera for these tests, so I'm not taking advantage of the intended field of view of 28 millimeters. It's gonna turn more like a 56 millimeter equivalent, which is still a practical lens. Um, it, it is hard to get a wide angle vintage lens, especially combined with a Micro Four Thirds camera. 
uh, but this roughly turns into a normal field of view. One day I'd like to get a full frame camera and test all my vintage lenses with their intended field of view um, and see what the true quality is like. So if I had any negatives to say about this lens, is really more about the camera I'm using with this lens. Um, I'm sure if I had a full frame camera and I could see the entire image, this would probably be a very nice option. But even on a micro four thirds camera, it produces pretty good results.